Don't do anything. 
Change out of the 
Wesley for ruining the fun that they thought was occurring and invites them back to the house. Chris gladly accepts, and inside can be found a bunch of spoopy mixtapes that Napster Book has created. Napster Book offers them a ghost sandwich, but it is a ghost sandwich, and Frisk cannot eat it. They instead lie on the floor and feel like garbage together, looking off into space. So it is time for Frisk to continue their journey. They walk past a small snail farm, where snails are racing. Frisk bets on one of the snails, but encourages it too much, and it loses the race. Frisk also meets a merchant known as Gerson, who is a very old-looking tortoise. He tells him many different tales from the underground, including Haskell's nickname of Blubby Buns. Doesn't seem like such a scary king after all. Risk reaches the end of Waterfall and is met by Undyne in her full suit of armor, staring down at them from a rock upon high. Undyne begins to tell Frisk the tale of humans and monsters, but realizes that was entirely pointless because Frisk is about to die. Undyne's attacks are fierce and unrelenting, but Frisk manages to escape periodically before being captured again. This leads Frisk to the idea of running to the next area known as Hotland. When leading Undyne there, Undyne collapses from heat exhaustion as she is wearing a full metal suit of armor. Frisk pops to the nearest water machine and pours a cup of water on her head. She hops off angrily, confused by the altercation. As Frisk walks into Hotland, they discover a large, grey-looking building, which seems to be a laboratory. Lab, not lab. When they go through the automatic door, a giant screen which seems to have camera feed pointing directly at them. Alfie's burst into the room, mumbling to herself about this and that, and realizes there is Frisk. She hurriedly tries to make up excuses for her actions, etc., etc., but they are interrupted by a robot bursting through the side of the lab. This robot proclaims himself to be Metadon, a human killing machine. Metadon puts Frisk on a quiz show and asks him a series of questions. Luckily for Frisk, Alfie is giving them the answers to the questions. Much to Metadon's dismay, Eddie scurries off for his next project. Alfie says to Frisk that she can guide them through Hotland and the core, as she is the world scientist and knows basically everything. She upgrades Frisk's phone to give them the social media network of the underground and also some other cool features, such as a jetpack. Frisk traverses Hotland, encountering a multitude of enemies, one of which is a spooky but rather sexy looking spider known as Muppet. She laughs as she plays with the human, trying to feed them to her pet. But she does, of course, eventually let them go. This would happen a lot quicker if Frisk had purchased something from the spider pig cell, made of four spiders by spiders of spiders, in the ruins. Metadon appears regularly, trying to kill Frisk through a variety of such as a cooking show, a show where Frisk is allowed to choose an item, but there are bombs, and an opera with a disco type floor, very similar to one of the puzzles Frisk encountered in Snowden, made by Papyrus. After escaping death multiple times, Frisk stumbles upon MTT Resort. Sans is waiting outside the front door and offers to take them for dinner. During this dinner, he lets Frisk know that he has been watching over them 
this whole time as he used to go to the store in the ruins a long time ago he wanted to practice his knock knock jokes and thought a massive doll would be a great place to do that he would knock on the door reel off his tracks but one day a voice replied the sweet female voice was delighted by his jokes and even had some of their own this female voice turned out to be Dora, and one day she requested that Sans watch over any humans who come through the door. Sans initially did not want to agree, but she made a very good joke spell, so he agreed, and has been watching over Frisk this whole time. Whilst telling this story, Sans informs Frisk that if he hadn't made that promise, Frisk would be dead. Where they stand. This is played off as a joke. It may or may not have been a joke. After passing through MDD Resort, there are more puzzles and monsters where Frisk could do get through. Alfie tries to guide them but realizes that all the floors are in the wrong place. All the rooms are swapped around and there are monsters where there shouldn't be. Alfie is flustered panics and hangs up the phone, leaving Frisk to deal with it alone. After doing so, Frisk enters a large room, with Metaton standing at the centre. Metaton goes on to explain how all of this was a ruse by Dr. Alphys. She created the challenges and obstacles so that she could insert herself into Frisk's story and help them out. But Metaton had messed with them, because he is not just a human killing machine. He is an entertainer. He states he has no desire to kill Frisk. He just wants to entertain the underground and go on to entertain humanity. So this was his last show, with Frisk's soul he could cross the barrier and become an entertainer for everyone on the surface. Which would be pretty handy. Alfie's calls Frisk and informs them of the switch on Metaton's back. When Frisk presses the switch, Metaton transforms into a more fabulous, flamboyant, very leg-focused robot. And the two put on a show for the underground. There is boasting, essay writing, dodging, product placement. Metaton's energy consumption is not very efficient in that form, and he does stop losing limbs throughout the battle, but his views go through the roof, and they reach the viewer call-in milestone. The first viewer to call into the show is Napster Blake, who turns out to be Metaton's cousin. Metaton used to be a ghost, and created the rebel body for them to inhabit. But upon hearing how sad Napsburg is, that this is the large show, and hearing the echoes of many others across the underground who felt the same, Metaton decides that the surface can wait, and that humans have many entertainers, but the monsters only have one. When Frisk reaches the end of the core, Elvis informs them that she was lying. Frisk cannot leave the underground alone, and will have to kill Asgore. Asgore will not spare them. She apologizes, and Frisk is forced to debate the choice. Frisk enters a long, golden, well-lit corridor with grand pillars and a beautiful tile floor. In the middle of the corridor stands Sans. Sans says to Frisk that this is their judgement, and he judges their actions throughout their journey through the underground. He deems him to be a good person, as they haven't murdered anybody, and wonders what will they do when confronted by the king. Frisk leaves the corridor and enters what is known as home. It looks remarkably similar to the home that Doral has in the Frisk struts down the corridor to a mirror, and upon looking in it, finds that it says, This 
Rascal solemnly raises his trident and smashes the spare action that Fresco had been using throughout the entirety of their journey. There is no mercy to be had here. Either Fresco dies and the monsters are free to recover upon mankind, or Frisk kills Asgore and leaves the monsters trapped underground forever. The fight is long and arduous and gritty and troublesome, but eventually Frisk gets Asgore down to low HP. Suddenly, bullets appear around Asgore's soul and strike life out of him. These bullets belong to Flowey. Flowey thanks Frisk for getting Asgore to such low HP that he can never do it himself, and he absorbs the human souls, turning into a monstrosity known as Omega Flowey. Omega Flowey torments Frisk over and over and over. Frisk is unable to reload as Flowey now has more determination than they do. Frisk dies in many horribly painful ways, but perseveres. They keep going, they keep fighting, until the human souls inside of Flowey start to fight back. Their determination is greater than his. They overtake him and defeat him, along with Frisk. Bruised, beaten, and defeated, Flowey lays on the floor. Frisk approaches them and decides to spare him. Flowey is confused and hurt and declares that he will kill everyone that Frisk loves. Frisk still chooses to spare him. He runs away crying, baffled by the interaction. Frisk then leaves the servants, leaving the underground without a king, and without human souls. A rather tragic ending for everyone involved, but Flowey has a suggestion. What if Frisk didn't do everything that they could have done? What if they befriended some monsters better, deepened their friendships, tried something new? What would happen then? Upon hearing this, Frisk uses their determination to reload earlier into the underground. They go on a bizarre date with Papyrus and end up being friend zone, but that's okay, this is a pretty cool guy. Papyrus takes Frisk to Undyne's house to join them for their cooking lesson. When Undyne opens the door, She's no longer in her armor, and she's just in a tank top. And she's a very cool looking visual lady with an eye patch. Undyne is absolutely appalled that Pyrus would bring the human to her front door, as she hates sand guns. But Pyrus is smart. After jumping out the window, he claims that Undyne could never be friends with a human, and he was wrong to think so. Undyne wishes to prove him wrong and invites us in for drinks. The result of the cooking lesson is an odd friendship between Undyne and Frisk, and Undyne's house being burnt down. Luckily, Sansa for Paris have a place of her to stay, but before she leaves, she gives Frisk a very tightly shut letter that Frisk must not open under any circumstances. The letter is to be delivered to Dr. Alphys, so Frisk goes off to Hotland once again. They slide the letter underneath the door. Alphys believes this to be more hate mail, but decides to open that one anyway. She is shocked by the passionate love letter and opens the door to find Frisk. She seems a bit confused, but agrees to go on a date anyway. She don't say beautiful flowy polka dot dress, but it becomes apparent during the date that her gifts were intended for someone else. One of the gifts was armor polish. Frisk realizes that Alphys has a big fat crush on Undyne, and presumably from the letter, Undyne 
slash unlocked Alfie's. Risk wants to help Alfie's confess her love to Undyne, so they do a little role play. Undyne walks in on the middle of this role play. However, the rather awkward situation is resolved nicely. Alfie's confesses that anime is not human history and that she just likes to lounge around in her pajamas and eat yogurt and seaweed and other things. Undyne says that she doesn't care about all of Alfie's nerdy crap, she just cares that she's passionate. But once Alfie's goes off to retrieve something, Undyne grabs Frisk, shaking them violently, exclaiming, Anime is real, right? Anime is real, right? Frisk of course informs Undyne that anime is indeed real, and Undyne is satisfied. But Paris is brought along to help Alfie's with their self-esteem as they jog a lap suiting about how great they are. But after doing one lap, Alfie's is a little bit sweaty and out of breath, so she decides to talk to Frisk. She says that whilst she's being honest about her feelings with Undyne, amongst other things, there is one very big thing that she has been hiding. She takes Frisk to an elevator, which breaks upon descending, and opens into a dingy, dark, leaky, green lab. This is known as True Lab, the place where the amalgams reside. Whilst trying to restore the power, Frisk sees all of these amalgams, and they seem rather feisty and spooky. But luckily, they were just a bit hungry as they weren't being fed on time. Alfie turns back on the power and thanks Frisk for helping them. She says that she has more courage to be herself, and she will inform the families of the fate of their loved ones. Upon completing all these side quests, Frisk returns to the castle and confronts Askel again. This time, before the fight actually begins, Toriel interrupts, claiming that this is no decision for a young child to make. The other monsters Frisk has met along their journey also appear, agreeing that there must be another way, and that Frisk is very much welcome in the underground. All of a sudden, a large, green, spiky vine shoots out and grabs every single monster. This was Flowey's plan all along. He had already absorbed the six human souls, and now is going to absorb every single monster soul from the underground, which would equate to seven human souls. He laughs maniacally as he undergoes his transformation, when the light dims, floating before Frisk, is Asriel Dreamer, the god of Hyperdeath. Asriel calls Frisk Kara many times throughout their fight, due to the fact that they look rather similar. Asriel's power is overwhelming. It feels like the world is ending. Frisk dies over and over and over. But they simply refuse. Frisk's soul refuses to die. Frisk reaches out to all their monster friends inside of Asriel, trying to get him to snap out of it. First it's Undyne and Alphys, then Doriel and Asgore, and the Skeleton Brothers. These souls find themselves and work together to convince Asriel, Yo buddy, this is a bit weird, let's stop doing that. Asriel snaps out of it and uses his newfound power to destroy the barrier and set the underground free once and for all. Frisk tries to tell Azrael that they could return to the surface with the other monsters. However, Azrael no longer had any souls inside him and would soon resort to the bitter, spiteful flower he was before. He thanks Frisk for everything, apologizing for mistaking them for Kara, and gives them a tearful hug before walking off into the underground to live out the last few moments as Azrael. The monsters do not remember what occurred during the fight, but the barrier is broken, and they wish for Frisk to be their human ambassador. Frisk gladly agrees, and they walk out hand in hand to view the sunrise or sunset.
to school like she had always dreamed. Papyrus and Sanskrit to ride a motorbike. 